of you in the back who thought it was Hugh Jackman, thank you. I would not be standing here telling you this if it was not for that man giving me my first opportunity. He introduced me to music theater. He introduced me to New York City. He introduced me to what it is to be a collaborator in this business. I owe the last 25 years of my career to the guy who's doing what he's doing right now still. Neon woods, neon witches and slippers and hoods. Just the two of us, neon lies. Take that home with our beautiful prize. Just a few of us, it takes trust. It takes just a bit more and we're done. We want four, we have none, we got three. walks into an audition and um, she reads the sides that we give her, Janine Tesori and Sam Gold and I. She reads these sides in an incredibly human way and then we get her to do some improvs and she dives right in and she's completely game and curious and adventurous and she's delightful and she's delighted with the process and the interaction and all of it, all of it. and she tells us this would be her first professional job and we're slightly frightened because something about her makes us feel that somehow she's going to end up with her name above ours in the program. <laughs> your swagger and your bearing and the just right clothes you're wearing, your short hair and your dungarees and your lace-up boots and your keys, oh, your ring of keys. First, thanks to the Drama's Guild Fund for this honor, and thanks to all of you who came out to celebrate. The efforts of the Drama's Guild Fund through the Legacy Pro Project and the Traveling Masters Program has ensured that this invaluable asset will be preserved, and I, for one, am deeply grateful. Oh, hi. <laughs> Thank Kevin you're here. You look absolutely terrific, honestly. Mother wanted me to come out in a kimono, so we had quite a fight. The best kind of clothes for a protest pose is this ensemble of pantyhose pulled over the shorts, one under the skirt that doubles as a cape. To reveal you in capri pants, you fashion out of ski pants in a jersey knit designed to fit the contour of your shape. Then cinch it with a cord from the drape. I'm a member of the Drama's Guild Fund, and I'm also on the panel that gives grants to dramatists who are in financial distress. It might surprise you to learn that even a playwright who has written a hit play can find himself in financial distress for so many reasons. Serious illness, people like Bernie Madoff, also a serious disease. <laughs> <laughs> there is no greater satisfaction than helping a fellow writer out of his or her financial difficulties. So I want to give you my personal thanks for being here and supporting what we do. When did I fall? So this evening, when the Dramatist Guild Fund has chosen to celebrate me and my love of the theater, I in turn want to celebrate the wonderful work of the fund. I am so personally grateful to all of you who make the world of theater come alive. Your gifts, your artistry, your belief in what you do have created so much joy for me as they have for so many other people. I, I want to say a couple of things about girl groups. You know, when, when we were writing it in 2000, we opened in 2004, and we closed in, strangely enough, 2004. Um, but one of the things that I didn't realize when, we were, when you write a new piece, 
was that you really need to have people who are willing to go on the journey with you, to be in the mess with you. And when you're writing for what we call a girl group, I've, I've understood now that a girl group might be Heidi Ettinger and Anne Gottlieb and me and Mary Rogers and Lisa Crone and Susan Birkenhead and Marsha Norman. And they're the women who I look to, Linda Twine, who I've thought, well, she can do it then I can do it. They're the bedrock, so it's not just making a sound, it's making a chord. Salty, 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 salty teardrops, and spilled salty tears in the ocean. I love being a playwright, let me just say that. It's, and one of the reasons is because of another playwright. My first play was pretty much of a disaster. It was called When Things That Go Bump in the Night. I was 24 years old. And uh, you know your play is not well received when the phone stops working. I mean, the phone is working, it just doesn't ring anymore. <laughs> Keep picking it up, there's the dial tone. But no one's called you. And about four days after that, I got a letter, a note, really from uh, Horton Foote, and he said, young man, I saw your play the other night. Sorry the critics kicked you around so badly, but hang in there, I think you've got some talent. And it's a gesture like that is probably why I'm still standing here after all these years. With these two performers, I get very emotional whenever I think of them, and the opportunity to hang out with them, or run into them, or like tonight, to perform with them. And so I kind of insisted that we shoehorn a piano part into Midnight Radio so that I could play it and um, so that I would have the opportunity again to perform with Michael Service and Miriam Shore, who are just amazing. Breathe, feel, love, give. Free, know in your soul, like your blood knows the way from your heart to your brain, knows it your. to the Dramatist Guild Fund, we must support our writers because if their families were supportive, they wouldn't have become writers in the first place. Good night.